friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Karina and today we are doing an irregular income budgeting exercise. So last Monday I shared with you guys um, five tips that I have that I use when budgeting with an irregular income, which ours is. And then for this week I promised that I would share a budgeting example. So I am going to do just that. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so the first thing that I want to clarify is that these numbers are 100% fiction. I just kind of went based on things that we use within our budget each month, but um, each number is totally made up. So I wrote out a couple of different things and just different information that I would need for this exercise. So the first thing that I have here is our, um, or what the income would be. I'm probably going to say our a lot because I talk about our finances a lot, but again, None of these numbers are real. So anyway, so I have the income, I have debts, um, I have some expenses here. Uh, yeah, this whole sheet is expenses. So some are just like set expenses and then some are cash expenses. And then I have one um, option here for sinking funds or a list here for sinking funds as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I am in my Erin Condren budgeting notebook that I use and I share my budget with you guys each month. I just turned to the very back and just am on a blank note page so that I could use this or do this exercise in here. Um, so yeah, you could definitely use like Excel for this instead or you could use a printed, um, like a printable option as well. But this is just kind of the easiest thing for me to use. So I'm going to start out by putting the income at the very top and let's go from there. the incomes that I um, went ahead and just made up here. So the first line here is check number one. So this would be pay period number one. The first income is $1,500. The next is $900. And then for checks number two, the first income again would be $1,500. The second would be $700. So you can see there's a bit of a variance there. Um, so this income here is basically how my husband and like our income is set up. Mine fluctuates on a monthly basis and his is regular. So it's consistent. He's on like a salary. Um, so mine varies from basically paycheck to paycheck. So this is um, just the example of that variant. So the total that we have here is 4,600 for the month. Now with this, we need to make sure that our expenses are taken care of, that our, um, you know, anything we need for cash would be taken care of and that any of our payments would be set and taken care of within this um, total here. And then for anything extra that we have left over, that's when we would separate it out and allocate it towards sinking funds or extra snowflake payments, etc. So for our expenses, um, I'm going to go ahead and write those out. So I wrote out our expenses here and I went ahead and wrote everything out. So we have rent at $1,600, cable at $100, utilities at $100, phone is at $100 as well, car insurance here is at $130, renter's insurance is $30, Netflix is at $10, the gym is at $50, and then I separated out our cash um, categories as well. So groceries we have $250, gas $250, household $100, personal $100, and pet is $40. So the total for all of our expenses at this point is 2860. So the difference between the 4600 here and the 2860 is 1740. So that's the number that we have left over to work with. Have 1740 left over. Um, I did not include our debt expenses or payments within the expenses category, which technically you would do that, but I separated out just for ease of kind of the video and just kind of to see um, just some different examples here. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is write out the debts that um, you know we have here. So let's do that. Okay, friends, so now that I have our debts listed out here, we have, let's see, a car payment at $400, student loan at $200, and then credit card number one, $150, credit card number two, $100, and number three is $75 for a total of $925. So from that $925, our difference from the $1740 that we had left over from paying our expenses once we had our income figured out, we're now looking at $815 as our remainder. And this is really where the fun happens. So this number is what you can then use to allocate towards your sinking funds. You can use it to make extra payments on your debts, uh, etc. So I'm going to actually write out some sinking funds that we want to make sure we're allocating towards for each month and see what we have left over at the end of that. But basically, this is exactly how we do things. Um, we you know, figure out how much income we have coming in, pay our expenses and our minimum debt payments, and then we, with the remainder, we figure out what we can do and where we can really work and get the best like bang for our buck and really make the most advancement on the baby step that we're on. So let's do our sinking funds. Funds are done. So I did Christmas for $100, a car for $130, which is like car maintenance or car fund, gifts at $50, medical at $100, rent increase at $100, and vacation at $50. So the total would be $530 that is going towards your sinking funds based on this scenario. So the leftover that we have now is $285. So that is what you have now to work with as far as doing an extra payment on one of your debts or allocating towards different um, sinking funds and things like that. So this is really what you get to play around with and where you get to make the most um, impact on your baby step, whichever one you might be on. So this varies by month, right? So this number here is gonna be different each and every month based on your income here. So if say, the first check here was $700, the remaining only would have been $85 based on using these exact numbers and allocating things exactly the same. So you want to make sure that your income covers your expenses, obviously, right? And then you have enough left over to really play around with and allocate to sinking funds and um, you know pay extra on debts and things like that or save if that's the step that you're on or whatever step you may be on. So um, whatever your income is, you know, it really doesn't matter how much or how little you're making, it matters how you're using that money. So I would encourage you guys, if you have an irregular income, to really write it out because that helps so, so, so much. And before you, you know, in order for you to know what you have coming in or going out, you have to have it written down. So I hope this has been helpful, guys. This was quick and easy and just really, really simple. So if you have any questions, definitely let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching, and be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos just like this. I will see you very, very soon. Have an amazing day. Thanks so much for watching.